Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to give you guys a little bit of background on how I got into rotaries, how many RX-7s I've owned up to this point, and why I've stuck with rotary powered RX-7s. But before we do that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell icon so you guys are notified whenever I upload a new video. With all that said, let's get started. Leading up to our senior year in high school, me and my brother were able to get our hands on a 1994 Nissan Altima. Uh, definitely not a rotary. I had no idea what a rotary engine was at that time. Only thing I know was just regular piston engines. By the time we graduated high school, we were into cars and at some point, I souped up my 1994 Nissan Altima and gave it an R33 body kit. I was planning to get an SR20 swap on that car, but unfortunately, I've got into an accident and totaled the car. Luckily for me, it wasn't my fault and so I got money from the guy's insurance and got me another car. But before all that, me and my brother have been watching this drifting anime called Initial D. I was a big fan of Takumi Fujiwara who was drifting AE86. We all know that the AE86 was the OG of drifting back then. But as soon as I started getting to know what an RX-7 is and did my research, my attention went from the AE86 to RX-7s. Drifting in the US was still growing and uh, still fresh back in 2005-2006 and so the rise of the initial D came along and a lot of guys my age started watching that and started drifting out in the streets. Then my brother suggested something else and he pointed out maybe I should be different and try to get an RX-7. I'm still winning this. I had no idea what an RX-7 is or what a rotor engine at that time. Soon enough, I started researching about it and I was very intrigued on how this car drives. I started paying more attention to Ryosuke Takahashi, which is the driver of that RX-7. His ideology of driving, drifting, and the way he carries himself in that series. definitely made an impact on me and especially his RX-7 which made a really good impression. The more I watched that series, the more I got infatuated with the RX-7s and so at that point I was very invested on getting an RX-7 FC. Now fast forward when I had the accident following year, I was able to get insurance money from the guy's insurance and I could not get a turbo RX-7. I searched eBay and somehow I got lucky finding this one RX-7. It's a non-turbo but it was being sold for 2500 Luckily this guy was local and uh, I contacted him. I asked him if he could like drop it down to maybe two grand. Uh, we made a deal. If I come down and check it out, then he would let it go for two grand. So we went ahead and set up a date. I got one of my friends to come and help me pick it up. And so when we got there, uh, I checked out the car. The car drove fine. It was, it was amazing. I ended up making a deal. I paid $2,000 for that. I was ecstatic when I got home. I went ahead and took pictures, uh, test drove the car even more around the neighborhood. It was a 1987 RX-7 GXL, which is uh, one of the premium models that they had because it has limited slip. Uh, that's what you wanted for drift cars. It has nice interior, nice body. It has no dent or whatsoever. It was red, but later on down the road, me and my friends decided to paint our cars and uh, I painted my car white, exactly just like uh, Ryosuke Takahashi's car in Initial D. Uh, me and my friends started drifting out there in the streets, in the parking lot. Definitely not a takeover. Uh, we were out there on parking lots, like behind the buildings, making sure we're away from the public and especially from cops. I've had a car, I would say maybe three years or four years and later on I crashed it onto the, um, the on-ramp where the, uh, the median starts and it was definitely devastating. Uh, I was okay, but it, it definitely brought me down. I brought it back home and you know the car is just smashed in the front end. Uh, it was definitely totaled, the, the hood was up, 
I couldn't even open the hood. I bought a lot of aftermarket parts for that car and made sure I removed all those parts. I took out the exhaust, suspension, uh, anything that I could take off. But unfortunately, I couldn't take out whatever is under the hood because as you can see, the hood is smashed in. I couldn't take it off. It's just stuck there. So I had to just leave all the stuff that was in there. It took a little bit for me to save up a little bit more money and I was able to find another RX-7. It was actually in a really good working condition. And, uh, I was able to get it for like a thousand dollars. Thanks to my cousin for coming with me and helping me negotiate with that person. I've had that car for like maybe two years. Uh, it was great, everything's running good until I was T-boned by somebody. It wasn't even that bad, but the car was claimed total, even though it's not much damage, but that was it for the RX-7. Uh, it was uh, short-lived, but it was it was good because uh, I was able to get a good chunk of money. I was on the hunt again for another RX-7. This time, I was able to find a somewhat running Turbo 2 RX-7, which I've been longing to have. This kid was from Tennessee, and uh, he posted that on Craigslist. I was able to contact him and uh, set up a date where I can pick it up. So my friends came with me, we got a U-Haul. I'm going there pretty much to just go ahead and get the car, even though the car was having issues. So we went ahead up there in Tennessee and we got the car and brought it home. We brought it to this shop called Three Face Racing, which uh, they specialize in rotaries. The owner has been a pretty good friend of mine throughout the years and he's been uh, helping me with rotary issues and uh, repairs. They were gonna look at the issues and see what's going on with the car, you know, what's wrong, why it's not running right, and they're gonna try their best to actually make it run perfect. So fast forward, like maybe like three, four months later after that, uh, the car is pretty much ready. Uh, I was making good numbers on a dyno. I think it was like 287 horsepower because it's got like a turbo upgrade. After months of waiting, I was so excited to actually drive it off the shop and just take it home and, you know, feel that nice turbo feeling. <laughs> Finally got off the shop, driving at home, and there was a chick in this Camaro, which I actually raced. We were going at it, I think we were going like 100 miles an hour. My buddy told me that I was shooting flames in the exhaust, which is really cool. I actually won from her. I was able to cap her really good. But all of a sudden, I started hearing like fluid spewing out somewhere from underneath. And my car started to slow down a bit. Luckily, we were close to my exit. I just trying to make it to the exit and park it somewhere. Uh, we were able to park it in a parking lot and we just left it there and picked it up the next morning. When we brought it home the next day, we pretty much realized it's not starting. Uh, the oil has been leaking everywhere and it was just not good at all. So we brought it back to 3 Face Racing for them to look at it and somehow the oil um, return line busted. All the oil came out of the engine and pretty much had a spun bearing. At that point, there's really nothing I could do. Uh, pretty much the car would need an engine rebuild because of that. And I still owed a good amount of money to Three Face Racing, but he cut me a deal and told me that if I just give him the car, put all the upgrades with it, he'll just give me a stock RX-7 which I said yes to it and it was good, he was cool with it. I had the silver RX-7 for just not even a month and I went ahead and sold it because I had to get some money for emergency and I sold that car and will not be driving another RX-7 until 2013. When 2013 came around, I told myself, you know, it's been a long time since I've 
driven an RX-7 FC. It's always been my favorite car and I could not get away from it. I could not separate myself from like not having an RX-7. Luckily for me, one of my friends was selling an RX-7. It's a Series 5. Uh, as you guys know, Series 5 is from 89 to 91. And uh, 86 through 88 is called Series 4. Uh, Series 5 was definitely the better of the, uh, the two. And I was able to get my hands on it. He was only selling for me for like eleven $1 hundred dollars. Uh, the car was not in the best shape, but it's got straight body, a little bit of like dents here and there, and it is now what you see behind me. And it's currently what I'm drifting in. This car have gone through so much upgrades, so much changes. It was rattle can black before when I got it from my friend, and uh, I painted that white, which is like rattle can white, and then. Later on, I plastic dipped it red. Was not the best decision whatsoever because taking off the plastic dip was like the most annoying thing ever. I do not recommend plastic dip whatsoever. But this car has survived countless busted radiators, overheating issues, clutch problems, and many more. I've got this car since 2013 and it's now year 2023. I am actually surprised that I still have this car and would not sell this car whatsoever. As soon as I got this car, uh, I took it to Three Face Racing and they were able to weld me up another diff. And I've been running the same differential since 2013 and it's still going strong. Uh, I'm surprised how it held up from all the uh, abuse from drifting. The major thing I've done in this car was getting the engine rebuilt. The engine's been rebuilt like four years, almost four years ago. Uh, right now it's got 20,000 drift miles. It's been rebuilt with mild bridge port and uh, they open up the exhaust port, which is like made it even bigger. Uh, but the only problem I'm having right now is just uh, it's running low power. And I'm really guessing that it's the uh, the actuator ports, the six ports in this motor. Right now, I'm like just running 117 to the wheels, which I dynoed before at three phase racing. <laughs> which was not a fun thing to see on the um, on the screen. But I'm disappointed, but at the same time, I'm amazed like how I can slide this car with just very low power. I wish I could gain a little bit more power because it shouldn't be running that low on the dyno. I'm trying to fix the issue with this car and that's where I'm at right now. But overall, this car is amazing. It's great. I've crashed the car twice. Actually, you know what, three times but the car is still in one piece. Uh, this car could take, somehow this car is a freaking tank and it could take that much damage and still driving like a champ. Now that I won't be drifting for a bit, uh, I'm planning to refresh this car, maybe work on the body myself because it, it gets really expensive nowadays. I'm just gonna work on it until it's, it's somewhat decent. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna put wide body later on. Am I gonna get another RX-7 after this? Yes. I'm planning to get another RX-7, a Turbo 2 shell. I do have three Turbo 2 engines that I can put in it. They're disassembled and needs rebuild. I have two builders that I can choose from, so I could either take it to one of them. I'm gonna try to run a half Bridgeport Turbo 2 engine. I just wanna keep my drift cars like reliable and you know not have to change parts frequently. And so that's why I'm gonna keep it under 400, pretty much. If I can gain a little bit more power here, if I fix the issue, then I can go ahead and just keep this car as my seat time car. I rarely break parts in this car and it's amazing because I can just go to the track and drift it with no problem, no issue. And I can drive the car back home again fine, you know? Am I gonna keep my car's rotary? Yes. Am I a purist? Yes and no. I understand people just want to like be creative and use LS in their RX-7s. You know, that's great. That's on them. I'm more of a uh, rotary enthusiast. My friends tell me that 
you know, why don't you put an LS in this car or two Jay-Z or whatever? And I'm like, oh, this is my thing. You know, I've loved rotaries. I'm an old school, I want to say true to whatever the engine is in this car. And that's just how I do things. And I love rotary engine with a passion. And I do not want to be like how everyone else. I want to stay different and I want to keep the rotary engine alive and you know there's a lot more people out there drifters you know like switching over to rotaries you know you have Adam LZ with his four rotor Toyota Supra or you have James Dean with his new RX-7 FD with four rotors and that is amazing because rotaries out there are being put on the map again and you know it shows that these engines are like very fun to drive it's it's so much more to it than just Dorito engines you know I don't care if my car only makes 117 to the wheels I'll keep it how it is and enjoy how the engine performs you can't compare that sound from anywhere you know I mean maybe lawnmower or rebacker could come close to it but with all jokes aside I will not changed my opinion about rotaries you know in general to me they are one of the most amazing things that's been invented and we have Felix Wanko to thank for that and I hope his uh, rotary engine legacy will continue later on and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a little history about myself and how I got into rotaries and let me know down in the comments on what you think about rotary engines do you like them or do you not like them and I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that bell icon so you guys are notified whenever I upload a new video. And make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.